days away from the opening game you guys are going to feature. How pumped are you? Yeah, really excited. I think um, last year, obviously having two seasons in one year, they sort of rolled around pretty quickly. But um, this year, having a bit of a longer break, and I think um, the whole league's really ready to go. So it'll be really exciting to get out there on Friday. Are you going to be at their roofs? How's your ankle? Yeah, no, I'm good to go. Um, yeah, feeling really good. Had a really good session on the track last night. Um, so yeah, really excited. Should be should be all sweet. Room said it's the sixth time the Fives have been in the opening fixture of the season. Is the excitement to be part of the with the showpiece game, does that ever get out? No, I've, we were discussing it last night as a playing group and I guess the weeks that you really enjoy the build-up leading into games and I guess round one is absolutely that feeling and then finals games as well and between that it's kind of like you get into work and, and you're just focused on the week by week but I guess it's sort of one of the enjoyments that you get um, that you really need to make sure that you embrace it and um, enjoy every minute of it is that build-up and yeah, as you said, we're really fortunate to to play in the opener majority of the years. And um, yeah, it's just a, such an exciting feel. I feel people are just hanging out for it majority of, of the year. And we're pretty lucky this year that we get to start off our year taking on last year's best. So there's no bigger challenge and um, we're really look, looking forward to it. Tyler, now vice captain of the rating premiers and the premiership flags have the unfurled on Friday. Has it sort of sunk in yet what the group's been able to accomplish? Yeah, I think so. We had, like I said, a, you know, a good chunk of time off and I think that was really good for our group to um, yeah, really get together and enjoy what we had achieved and accomplished. And yeah, we're really proud of that and to get to unfurl the flag on Friday night would be really exciting. But we're also in a new season and every year is so different um, as we've seen across the, the seasons of AFRW. So um, as much as we're proud and yeah, happy with what we achieved last year, everything's different this year and we're just excited to see what we can do this year. Embrace the round one atmosphere. Will you embrace a bit of Missy Higgins beforehand? Yeah, well, I'll, um, I think we actually sent a message to Jesse, your ops manager, because I think you guys teed it <laughs> up and I said, can you just put our recommendations for the set list in there? But um, <laughs> yeah, it's done the rounds in the group chat this morning, actually, with e Emily Smith, one of our forwards. She thinks she's a bit of a Missy Higgins specialist when it's karaoke night. Um, so she reckons she's already teed up that it's going to be Missy in the background on the piano and uh, Smitty taking the microphone away. So, no, it'll be good. It's really exciting. I mean, um, she's a bit of an Aussie icon. So, um, you know, if not to come down and, and watch us girls have a kick around, then come down and watch Missy beforehand shred it up before we do. Does it feel like Back to the Future a little bit for you, Ruth? Do you ever bring back to the young players from injury that have been so important to the club? Yeah, I think oh, it's, I mean, it's no secret that I guess the two players that come back in, Bree and Britt, how important they are to our game and, and to the team. Like, they're two of our leaders, Bree being captain and Britt a vice captain alongside me. But um, oh, just, I mean, it's been so tough for them with the two seasons in one year. They didn't just do their ACLs and miss a year of football. That They've missed a year and a half and they have just been, you know, chomping at the bit, trying to get back out there. But they've had to be so patient. And um, I think seeing, being really close friends with both of them, you know, aside from football, you you can see how much, you know, it takes from them mentally and emotionally as well. So um, they just seem like they haven't skipped a beat, honestly. they When you see them in training, you kind of step back and you remember why they were up there with the best of the best before they did their knees. And, and I have no doubt that they're going to pick off pick up exactly where they left off, um, especially Friday night. But, yeah, it's just so exciting for them and for the team because we just love playing with them. They're so important to us. Is there any doubt when it comes to no, no, she's good. Bree's, um, I mean, as much as she wouldn't want me to say it, but she's, uh, she's an old girl now. No, she's not. No, she, um, it's just one of those things, just get you through to, to round one. And I think there's a few of us like that, you know, even with my foot, it's like you just sort of manage. You, you, sometimes you don't want to risk, especially for us older girls, in the scratch matches and stuff like that. You kind of, you want to get there when it's important. So, um, no, she'll, she'll be ready to go and uh, 100%. You mentioned the last cast for you there. Yeah, good. Um, I think, you know, as in the way of captains and vice captains, it's the same as last year. So we've got a, a year under our belts of working together and, and we know how each other operate and generally where our minds are at. And we think pretty similarly, whether it's out on field or off field. But um, it's really exciting now that we're supported by the young girls coming through in Geordie Allen, Lauren Butler and Michaela Cam. Um, they're really up-and-coming young stars of the competition. I think they've shown that in 
in the last couple of years on field um, and now they get the opportunity, I guess. And, it, and it's a credit to them because the, our team see them as leaders. Um, and they're, they're youngsters, you know, they're 22, 23 years old. Um, but the confidence that they've shown, they were all pretty shy characters coming in to the team. And um, now they, you know, speak up and everyone listens and they're really valued players in our team. So um, it's a credit to them and, and we love having them, you know, in our meetings and all that kind of thing to, to give their opinion and to bounce off. Just on your leadership group, so Daisy was obviously at the helm for so many years. What's it been like working together without her to lead the side? Yeah, I think it's been spoken about a lot and I think the figure that Daisy is for AFLW is always going to leave sort of a big gap and a big mark on the game. But I think she'd sort of known that this was coming and the way that she prepared this next group of leaders to sort of be ready for that role and, and ready for when she's not there. Um, I think she did really well in that. But then there's also a lot of girls developing below the leadership group that we have now as well. And Daisy's always a really good point of contact and even though she might not be in the club, she's still there as a support and I'm sure I'll lean on her at certain times throughout the year but um, yeah she really developed and empowered a lot of people and um, she's left a good legacy on our group to sort of step into those shoes and see what we can do. There's still no CBA, is that an issue for you two as leaders? Is that something you have to talk to the playing group about or is that just at the back of your mind? To be honest we have we have AFLPA delegates who look after that so I'm not one of those no, no, no. I don't know about you but yeah. um so they do a lot of that communicating and communication to the group but I guess for us it's not it's not even really a thought right now our full focus is is round one and playing games and, and delivering you know really good footy on the park so I, I couldn't tell you the last time that I, I really thought about that post you know the discussion at the time. Just in light of your CEO Craig Kelly's comments on the ABC a few weeks ago about the expansion of the league and the, the pace of it, do you still feel supported by the club, especially given what's happened to the netball side as well? Do you, do you feel like you, the program has the club support? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, Ned's a very, um, you know, he's a super enthusiastic character and I think what people don't see is when he's in there and comes out on the court and, you know, has a kick and a handball with the girls and, um, you know, to be honest, like he, he's brutally honest in the way of the truth around where you know we are as a at, as a team we probably haven't performed up to where we could the last couple of years and I guess when he spoke to us it was about the commercial where we're at commercially as an AFLW team and um, it's we know that he's been brought in to make this club as successful as it can be which is going pretty well so far and I guess he wants us to be a part of that. He sees us as a big part of that and being a really successful side and he sees that, um, that that's something we can do with the list that we have and he doesn't want anything less than that. So when you've got a CEO that's that driven for success, it sets you up pretty well as a club that, you know, we're going to be doing pretty well for future years to come and, um, you know, we, we feed off that. So do you address those comments with the playing group or is there just already an understanding there about Oh, I didn't address post the interview. I mean, to be honest, I didn't even listen to the interview. But um, we've had a, a meeting with him prior to that where um, he just discussed where we're at as a group, where the club's at, the vision. So, And that's the thing. It was, it was the vision for the team. So it was about the future and, and how he sees us and that he's going to demand success from us, which, as I said, from a CEO, what more do you want than someone who's, you know, just wants the best for you and isn't going to have anything less? That's exactly what you want because that's going to drive us to be better. Tyler, Friday night we'll see you reach 50 career games. Have you had a chance to reflect on what you've been able to achieve in those 50 games? Um, yeah, I kind of forgot about it, to be honest. Um, I knew that the grand final was 49, which is a good thing. Um, so, yeah, I think it's kind of a nice thing to sort of tick off and, and reach that. And it would be nice to, you know, have the flag unfilling as well as part of that. But it won't all be about me, which is good. And um, I think my little sister will run out with me. So that'll be a nice little experience before the game.